I hope you are ready for the day. You know, when you start the day with Jesus, you can never go wrong. There may be things that may come along your way that may pose a hurdle, but then when Jesus is with you, nothing is hard, isn't it? And he will help you go through the day. I was driving from my home in Berlin Springs, Michigan to Maryland, which is about 1300 kilometers, 1300 kilometers. And in a hurry, I didn't have time to put up my gasoline tank in the car. And my wife said, Aren't you going to fill up? Which is usually my practice. But then I was in such a hurry to get going, I said, well, we can stop along the way in a gas at a gasoline station and fill it up. And she kept warning me like an alarm clock every 10 minutes. When are you going to stop? When are you going to stop? You know, good to have a wife like that. But then, this Adam and Saul said, well, I'll drive a few more miles before we stop for gasoline. And I got to talking with my wife and we were conversing and I forgot all about the gasoline. And very soon, the, the, the car started making some funny noise, muttering and muttering. And I pulled up to the shoulder. This was an express way. There are cars flying at 75 miles per hour. I pulled out and I put on my blinkers, acid light, and somebody stopped. A very kindly gentleman came out and said, May I help you? Is there something wrong with your car? I said, yes, sir, and I went to gas. You see, I had only half time, but hardly half time. I should have filled up. <laughs> now, I was in this predicament. I'm, I was so grateful for the help. The gentleman took me to the nearby gas station, and we got some gas in a gas tank, came and poured in the car. And, and we started, well, I went to the nearest gas station and uh, the same, same gas station and the guy was just laughing. He said, you ran out of gas? Yeah, I forgot. And the man, you know, took him and said, well, I'm the filler upper who fills the tank and he called himself the filler upper. I'm the filler upper. And so, I said, go ahead, make my day. And, and, and he filled it all up. I was on my way. You see, when I started, I should have been half empty, half full. You know what I mean? In the Bible, we have a story of a man who was half full, half empty. Let me read to you. This story, don't go to sleep, this is not story hour, right? Luke chapter 7, 36 to 50, kind of a long passage, but let me read that fast as I can. When one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him, he went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. Again, Luke 7, 36 to 50. A woman in that town who lived a simple life learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house. So she came in there with an alabaster jar of perfume. As she stood behind him at his feet weeping, she began to wet the streets in tears. Then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them, and poured perfume on them. When the Pharisee, who had invited Jesus, Saw this. He said to himself, you know, he was muttering to himself that if this man were a prophet, he would have known who was touching him and what kind of a woman 
she is, that she's a sinner. Jesus answered, Simon, I have something to tell you. Tell me, teacher, he said, two people owed money to a certain money lender. One owed them 500 denarii, the other 50. Neither of them had the money to pay back. So we forgive the debts of both. Now, which of them will love him more, Simon? Simon hesitatingly, haltingly, haltingly replies, I suppose the one who had a bigger debt forgiven. You have judged correctly, Jesus said. Then he turned toward the woman and said to, the, said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I came into your house, Simon. You did not give me any water for my feet, but she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman, from the time I entered, has stopped, has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head, but she has poured perfume on my feet. Therefore, I tell you, how many sins have been forgiven, as a great love has shown. But whoever has forgiven little, loves little. Then Jesus said to her, Your sins are forgiven. The other guests began to say among themselves, Who is this? Who even forgives sins? Jesus said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. What a powerful passage. In this passage we see three aspects. The forgiven, that is, both the sinful woman and the Pharisee Simon, and the experience of forgiveness, the forgiven, the forgiveness, and the forgiver. Three aspects. We have seen in this story that the forgiven right? Simon, the Pharisee who invited Jesus to his home, and this, what the Bible calls, the sinful woman. In the, at the outside, Jesus did not exhibit any resistance in accepting the invitation of this man to his home. He was a Pharisee. These were the people who constantly found fault with Jesus. Oh, he goes to the house of sinners. He eats with them. Now, he is in one of the Pharisees' boat. And who do you think were the others? Of course, fellow Pharisees. These were the ultra-religious people. Ultra-religious people. The knowing all who knew the Torah, who knew the scriptures, and, and they were the ones who were also part of the Sanhedrin. And so they were highly esteemed people. So Jesus accepted his invitation. There he is. And, and you heard me read the story. You see, as a rule, it was a breach of Jewish etiquette when men are gathered for a woman to interrupt the gathering. She was not to be seen. She could be heard but not seen. And here was a woman who boldly and forthrightly comes to Jesus and performs what she wanted to do. Why did she do that? How can you find out? And when she anointed the feet of Jesus, everybody knew. You see, she did not put a drop of that perfume. I don't know how many of you use cologne or perfume. You can make it out, isn't it, when somebody is wearing a, a, a drop of cologne or Perfume, you can make it up. 
just a drop will do it. You don't know the whole Bible, do you? No, just a drop. I used to love Cologne, but I stopped because the, the smell gets me a little bit. And so she brought the bottle, alabaster box, and this was no ordinary perfume. No. This was a very expensive perfume, and she broke that, anointed the feet of Jesus. She probably went to anoint his head, but ended up anointing the feet of Jesus, and she wiped his feet with his hair, and she never stopped kissing the feet of Jesus. And, and what was the attitude of the Pharisees? Why? Why such an expensive perfume? And in these other pages you read, Judas said to himself, and of course, shared that thought with the other disciples, hey, this money could have been used for the poor. What? You think Judas would do that? It would have probably gone in this shirt pocket and pant pocket and any other pocket that he had. That was Judas. But as a magnanimous man who liberally gave to the poor, he whispered to the other disciples. And of course, the Pharisees heard that too. And the Pharisees said, Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, amen. That would have been done. And what is Simon thinking? That the, 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 the host, <clears throat> if he only knew who was touching Let me read. From the inspired writing of Lenguard. Simon had led into sin the woman he now despised. Oh, oh, she had been deeply wronged by him. But Simon felt himself more righteous than this woman. And Jesus desired him to see how great his guilt was. He would show him that his sin was greater than hers, as much great as a debt of 500 pence of denarii exceeds a debt of 15 denarii. So, before Jesus could even announce that forgiveness, he tells, narrates this parable. You see, Jesus doesn't embarrass anybody. Even if you are the worst of sinners, you are a sinner. Get rid of now. Jesus never pointed out even Judas. He was with him so long. The traitor par excellence. He never pointed a finger at Judas. Except to say in the garden of Gethsemane. You betrayed him with a kiss, my friend. Even then, he called him his friend. That is Jesus. And that is Jesus even today. He never embarrasses a sinner. Never finds out your fault. And so, he narrates this parable. Simon was intelligent enough to get the point. And instead of Jesus pointing out, he afforded an opportunity for, for Simon to own up to his sins. Did he do it? Ah, haltingly, hesitantly, gradually. I suppose the one who owed the greatest sum of money. That was Simon. You see, in other passages, we also read that Simon was the one who Jesus cured of leprosy. Remember that? By curing Simon's leprosy, Christ had saved him from a living death. And now Simon questions the very person of Jesus. Who does he think he is? If he's a prophet, he would know that she's a sinful woman. She wouldn't. She, she, 
shouldn't be hit and he wouldn't let her touch him. If he wanted you. You see, we are all sinners. That's what the Bible says, Romans, third chapter. All have sinned. All. I'm a sinner. You're a sinner. But you see, the most glorious experience is to go to Jesus and let him forgive us our sins. Because he is the only one. These Pharisees ask, who is he? You see, the sins were forgiven in the temple after one offered a sacrifice that was still the practice during the time of Jesus, wasn't it? And now there was no sacrifice offered. And Jesus says, your sins are forgiven. Hey, 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 wait a minute. Did ask a lay, teacher? Doesn't she have to go to the temple? Doesn't she have to offer a sacrifice? Well, that's not what Jesus expected. What did he say? Your faith. How does it put it? Your faith has saved you. Your faith. So faith in who? Faith in Jesus, isn't it? By faith we are saved. Not by our works. And Jesus made it plain. Pharisees understood this. You see, these Pharisees were proud people. There was a sect called the bleeding Pharisees. These guys wouldn't even look straight. They would walk like this. Hang their head and walk like this. You know why? They didn't want to look at a woman and thereby sin. And they would walk like this and probably not notice something. Don't hit the wall or a pole. And they would bleed. And they wouldn't even wipe the blood and show the blood. Show off the blood. You see, I'm bleeding because I would, I would rather bleed than to sin. The bleeding Pharisees. Not all the Pharisees, but that was one of the sins of Pharisees. So he, he and Jesus showed that he paid the debt. He did not go. Remember the song? I knew the debt. I could not pay. I needed someone to wash my sins away. That's what that sinner lady for to herself. And now I sing a brand new song. Amazing grace. My Jesus paid the debt. I could never pay. I like the old name in our hymn. Jesus paid it all, all to him. I would not sing it, but I couldn't help it. Sing this song. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. That was the attitude of the uh, sinful woman. But what was the attitude of Simon? He was also forgiven by Jesus. But then he was such a proud sinner. Uh, is that an oxymoron? A proud sinner. Tactfully, the Savior led the proud Pharisee to realize that his sin, his seduction of that lady was greater than hers. So, this morning, as we ponder on this passage, think of your own life. Confession leads to forgiveness. And God demands that. There is no forgiveness without confession. And when you confess, it is salvation by faith. And then, what did Jesus tell him? Go in peace. The great shalom he alone can give. The great peace this world cannot offer. So, peace that Jesus offers includes that reconciliation that Paul is talking about in 2 Corinthians 5. We are reconciled to God through Jesus, who alone can offer sin. He didn't have to go uh, lead somebody to the temple. He had the authority.
to forgive sins. He alone can do that. And may God help us to be people who will confess if there is sin that you are holding on to. Maybe it is a wrong entry in your letter. Maybe it was copying in the exam. I don't know. Maybe it was an infield towards a friend or a colleague. Or it could be something that you have done against a colleague. Would you consider going to Jesus and asking him to forgive? No sin is too sinful for Jesus to forgive. Don't keep holding on to that sin. When Jesus forgives, we live at peace with one another. I know we are not easy to live with one another. You got to ask my wife what a difficult person I am. My dad used to say, to live with saints on high, oh, that's glory. But to live with the saints here below, that's another story. Did you get that? Yeah. To live with the saints on high, that's glory. But to live with the same saints here below, that's another story. That's me. Maybe that's you too. But Jesus offers such a peace that we can peacefully coexist, peacefully live in Jesus and with one another. Is there something you need to make right with a brother, with a sister, with a friend? Do it today. Who knows? Tomorrow might be too late. May Jesus forgive you. Accept that forgiveness. Live in peace. Peace that He has given you. Have a good day.